in this place to do amazing things. He's turning lives around. He's turning us, fast forwarding us. He's, he's doing groundbreaking miracles in our lives. Praise God. Ah, it's awesome. It's an awesome God. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. We give you praise, we give you all the praise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father, you are worthy of our praise, to you our heart we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, sing you are awesome, you are awesome in this place. Mighty God, you are awesome. You are awesome in this place. Our Father, you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. Oh, to you, to you, to you, our hearts we awesome You are awesome.
is your name, oh God. We worship your majesty. Awesome God, how great you are. Your miracle, we're standing on your holy name. Lord, we bow, Lord, we bow and worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. I am to say that you're my God. You are all together love me. You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to be saying here I am to worship.
another amen with joy hallelujah praise the lord people of faith please i want you to celebrate the lord that we have come to for we have come to mount zion tonight we have come to the city of the living god to the innumerable company of angels we have come we have come hallelujah please be seated in the presence of the lord thank you Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. This hour, hallelujah, cannot, cannot chase demons. So. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. There's just something intentional about faith. When people of faith sing that they're here to worship and bow down, they don't keep standing. When people of faith sing about the lifting up of their hands, they don't fold their hands. It means when you, when you say you have come to Baal and your spine is straight, there's a disconnection. There's a disconnection of light, disconnection of understanding. And you have set your mouth in a direction that your heart is not going. And it's with the heart that, that man believes, but it is with the mouth that confession is made. So... As, as righteous people of God, we have to be intentional about our responses to spiritual things because it is with our spirit that we serve the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Are we excited tonight? Are we ready to receive the word of the Lord? Talk to me. Are we ready to receive the word of the Lord? How many of you love the word of God? Genuinely love the word of the Lord. How many of you came out tonight because you came out tonight because you love the word of God? Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. You came out tonight just because you have something for the word of God. How many of you have had encounters with the word of the Lord as a person? The word of the Lord has changed your life at some point in your journey. Let me see your hand above your head. Wow. Praise the Lord. How many of you are, are expecting an impartation of the spirit of faith tonight? Let me see your hand. Hallelujah. 
Blessed are those that believe, for there shall be a manifestation of the things that, that you have believed. believed. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Say with me, I love the word of God. It is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Say, I will not stumble because God's word is in my heart. I will not struggle because I am rooted and founded on the word of God. Say, I accept the word of God as final authority in all matters of my life and the afterlife. There is no wisdom higher than its teachings. There is no power greater than its ability. Say, I know the word of God. It's the person of Jesus revealed. It is the glory of Christ released. Say, this word that I know is alive in me. Say, it's alive in me. I am encountering it every time I listen with childlikeness and reckless faith, ready to obey all it has to say. Say tonight, I fellowship with God's word. And as I do, I am brought into oneness with the word of God. I have the ears of faith. Say it again. Say, I have the ears of faith for the word of God. Touch your ears. Say, I have the ears of faith for the word of God. God's word is feeding my faith. It's drowning unbelief. It's drowning common lies that the devil tells. That the devil tells to attack a life of miracles. Say, I nurture the word of God. Put, put one hand on your chest. Say, I nurture the word of God. God's word has free course in my life. Say it again. I nurture God's word. It has free course in my life. Say it's taking root downward and producing fruit upward. I am committed to the ministry of the word of God over my life. It is my prime investment. Say it again. Say it is my prime investment. The word of God is my prime investment. I am who the word says I am. I go where the word says go. And I become what the word says. Everything that's written concerning me is my portion from the volumes of the book. In Jesus' name, say faith field, amen. amen. All right, we're ready for the word of God tonight. Um, I'm going to be sharing some things about the spirit of faith. Just to conclude the teaching from last week, I want to welcome our family, our precious, precious family online from around the world. And... Um, I want to welcome you if you're here in the studio. Make sure there's another believer, there's another Christian, another saint on a row or column where you're sitting so we can truly have Bible study together. Make sure there's somebody either in front of you or on your row at least beside you to your right to your left or there's somebody behind you and there's somebody around you as we get into the word of god tonight the spirit of faith is the is is on the table tonight and i just want to show us some things that will really really bless us amen from hebrews 11 we learned verse 2 that it's by faith we understand and that was the scripture i used the most last week by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god which means the worlds were giving meaning the worlds were giving a purpose by the word of god the worlds were giving an identity they were giving a frame they were given material reality frames frames produce stability they they allow things 
to be included, <laughs> included um, amongst other things. When it has a frame, it has a shape, it has a purpose, it has, it has use, it has a destiny. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things that are seen were not made from things that do appear. This is the power of faith. Welcomes you to a world of, of limitless possibility. It's the link to all the power of God. Faith is powerful. And we, we said that energy, energy is the name we give to everything that we feel and may never have seen. And faith is spiritual energy because when we use our faith, it produces results. But apart from the sister that bears faith, <laughs> and the local churches that bear faith, and the businesses that we name that bear, bear faith, you and me have, as it were, never seen that force. We call faith. But we know that it exists. The way we've never seen air. But we know that it exists because we breathe it. We use it. We experience it. It's the energy of life. Such is faith. Such is faith. Faith doesn't need a face. All faith needs is evidence, proof. The moment we can demonstrate the power of faith, then faith is alive in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we become the personality of faith. Faith is looking for your face to take on personality. Faith has no personality of its own. Faith is not looking to make a name for itself. Faith is not looking to make, uh, uh, to have an address of its own. Faith is looking for you to take it on and become a person of faith and become the address of faith and become the system of faith it is that kind of force now in order to introduce you to this thing that i call the spirit of faith and i want you to be looking for impartations because it is the teaching method of jesus to release spirit and impart life every time he speaks because jesus said the words i speak they are spirit and they are life so when he speaks his words, spirits are set in motion. You must understand what happens in the spiritual realm when God is talking to you. When Jesus is speaking to you, when the word of God comes to you, spirits are released. You must understand, not just the sound of the words or the idea, but spirits are released. It is spirits that bring to pass the things that are being said. The proof of authority in the spirit is that when you open your mouth, spirits are released. Spirits move in the direction of the things that you say. That's why the name of Jesus, although it's all powerful, it's not the same on every leap. It's not, on the, it's not the same on every tongue. Although there's all power behind the name of Jesus. So the name of Jesus can have things that some people cannot use and some people cannot deploy, even if they call on the name of Jesus. And that's where faith comes in. There's something the Bible calls faith in the name of Jesus. Faith in the name of Jesus as the connection to all the power that's in the name of Jesus. Jesus said the words I speak, they are spirit, which means my words are releasing spirit. You may never see it, but when Jesus is teaching, all kinds of aiding, helping spirits are released. You must be the kind of person that can hear words and receive spirits. You must be. You must be. You must be. You, you cannot hear words and all you are experiencing is communication. You must be the kind of person who sits under a teaching of faith. As somebody who is going to receive the energy, the spirit of faith, you must be the person who can receive spirit on hearing words. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Which means when Jesus speaks, when the word is released from a vessel that's representing Jesus. And in some days in your life, it will be you. When that word is released, spirits are, are energized. They are in motion. And it says the goal of every word is life. So when he says, the words I speak are spirit and they are life. 
First, he's talking about the transport system with which what he's saying leaves his mouth. He says it's not air. It's not, it, it's, <laughs> it's not space. It's not time. Jesus is the only one who talks and his words are not traveling in time. He says these words are spirits. And when they get to where they are going and they impact it, they produce life. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I'm talking to people of faith. I said, hallelujah. This is how we receive the word of God. A spirit to produce life. To produce life. His spirit. When you look at somebody, I wish we could have a practical session. And you lay your hands and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. The consciousness you must have is that when you stretch your hand and you open your mouth, the spirit of God that produces the effect of healing was what was released. So that your words will not lie in the wisdom of man or the excellency of speech, but in the power that the spirit of God brings. If you don't have that consciousness, you will not have a lot of success in the healing ministry. That it's the spirit of God that's released. And the expectation you have is that if it's God's spirit that's going out, then life must come out. If it's God's spirit that's going forth, then life must come forth. That's the mindset with which you can heal the sick all the time. That's the mindset. That's the mindset with which you can hear about a failing business. And you can command it to be healed because you are aware you're a man under authority. You say to one, go. He goes. You say to the other, come. And he comes. That centurion was telling Jesus that what you do in the spirit, I do in the natural. When I open my mouth, servants go. When I open my mouth, servants come. He says, so you don't need to visit my house. I know that you are in the spirit how I am in the natural. You are under authority. You are operating with authority. You belong to a rank. Of authority you are surrounded by authority you are covered your words release personalities and when jesus looked at him, jesus said kai this is the greatest faith in israel that one uh, that somebody understands the technology of what makes power released when words are spoken and so jesus didn't need to go there anymore he spoke the word and the bible says the very same hour <laughs> there was a healing because the spirit of the Lord, the messengers of the Lord, the angels of the Lord are released. What would your life be like if you knew that every time you prayed, spirits of God were released? You see, I can use plural with the spirit of God. Spirits of God were released. Spirits from God were released. And you have to practice it as a person of faith. As a person carrying the spirit of faith. Because that's really what happened. And a centurion knew it. And we must do, we must know better. And we must do better. Hallelujah. That's the only way we can fight doubt. When we release the word of faith. Oh, I'm going ahead of myself. I'm going to teach you the word of faith after the spirit of faith. When we release the word of faith. And the first thing you get is the feedback of the spirit of doubt. You speak a word, something else speaks back to you. And tells you, did you feel anything? I hope you know if you didn't feel anything, nothing happened. Did you sense anything? You said you transferred power. But if you are aware, if you already approach the situation with the conviction that what's going out on my command is spirit, it's very difficult for the enemy to send any suggestion using sensory perception to overturn your faith. Because your faith is not lying in anything that can be handled with senses. Come on, come on. Where are the people of faith now? Do you understand what I'm talking to you about? The moment you set sail like that in your mind, it's difficult to undo you. It's not difficult to turn you over. It's difficult to, to unbuckle your conviction because you, you, the communication, although with words, the effect, the communication, and the effect you are expecting is spirit and life. And there is no human measurement for spirit. There is no human measurement for life. All life comes from the spirit. And so the devil has nothing on us. Yes, that's a good scripture. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are 
spirit, they are not phrases. They are spirit and they are life. Say, Father, I receive your spirit and I experience your life. Pray in other tongues for 30 seconds. I receive your spirit, I experience your life. I receive your spirit, I experience your life. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Now open your eye. We see with this, this short teaching I've done, if I close the service, I've helped your destiny. I've helped you. Something happened when you finished that prayer and looked at me again. Something happened. Parts of you that were not sensitive were awoken. Under this atmosphere now, there's nothing I say that cannot come to pass in your life. Because you all, you've positioned yourself to receive spirit and experience life. And Jesus said that those are the components of his word. Are you still there? How many of you felt the energy surge in the last 30 seconds? You felt something shifted in consciousness? Yes. Carry this along with you to every anointed moment. The words Jesus speaks, they are spirit. They are, sometimes your body is tired, but if you say the words are spirit and they are life, your body can be invigorated with power again. Sometimes it's your mind, it's, 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 it's busy, it's pressurized. But if you declare over yourself the words that are coming are spirit and they are life, you, you, you won't be part of the people checking my tenses. No, 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 no. You won't be the people weighing the texture of my voice because what you came to catch is spirit and it's life somebody say the spirit of faith I receive a new measure of the spirit of faith from my ankle to my knees from my knees to my shoulders from my shoulders over my head I receive a baptism of the spirit of faith Look at me. I came into the room tonight with an incredible unction of the spirit of faith. And if you need the spirit of faith for your destiny and your assignment, especially in this season where things are shutting down and there's great distress. Some people can't even come to church because of the great distress. But I want you to receive the spirit of faith. I don't want you to be too conscious of rheumatizing. You're looking for where the pastor is going to say something that increases your, uh, your theology. No, 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 no. Be looking for when the pastor says something that your heart is pulling on. And you just notice that he said it and something tugged. Something was like a rope. It was like a rope was connected straight into your soul, and somebody jacked you into a new energy level. That's what you start. When you start growing in Christ, you stop listening to the things they said. You start looking for looking for the things they didn't say, but the Holy Ghost is emphasizing. That means you're you're growing. You're interpreting the Word of God. You're doing business with the Word of God. When you say spirit, you're referring to two kinds of things and I, I must let you know this in this conversation first you're referring to um generally speaking the non-human part of a person yeah is that true talk to me is that true the non-human part of a person um and the spirit creates a seat like a bowl to carry the emotions carry the 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 soul um of a person and it's different from the body but there's another thing that spirit means that's important if we must maximize the idea of the spirit of faith and it is when you say the spirit of God or you say the spirit of the Yoruba speaking nation or you say um the spirit of the house of kings. You're not referring to 
the non-human portion of any particular person. You're actually talking about the prevailing quality of that person, that product, that system, that group, or that period of time. The prevailing quality, the prevailing, the prevailing character of the Yoruba people is the spirit of the Yoruba nation. Okay? So, we, we go to a party and two people are on the t same table and one person says, and, and then the waiter brings the, the menu and one person says, uh, and then the waiter asks, what do you both want? And one person says, eh, what's the most spicy thing on the menu? You know? It's easy for the other person to say, hmm, you're bad people. Whether or not that person is born from the western side of the nation, the moment the person starts to talk about something that's hot and spicy, the person is exhibiting without DNA the spirit of the Yoruba people. So when we say, yeah. So when we say the spirit of faith, what we are introducing you to, more than a non-human gush of wind passing through that you are looking to catch and then be hung over by. You are actually looking up to pick up the character of faith. Are you still there? You are looking to pick up the mannerisms of faith. Let me tell you this for free. This will be crazy but it may be the most powerful lesson on faith you will ever learn for your faith to be strong when you start off as a person of faith 90 percent of the time you must be ready to act it you will need a lot of drama to be a person of faith to have the spirit of faith sometimes you will bring your chest out when your heart is beating there's fear in your heart, but you still chest out like, <laughs> like you're strong. You, you're, going to, you're, going to need, you, you're going to need a lot of acting and action. Yes, to be a person of faith. There will be many times you're afraid and God will say, leap, and you will jump afraid. There are many times you get away from the Lord and because of prevailing circumstances, facts and figures and your intelligence does not allow you to accept it as your current reality. But you'll be declaring it like a madman. There is something called the foolishness of faith. I'll teach it. After I teach the spirit of faith and I teach the word of faith, I'll teach the foolishness of faith. You'll be required to say things you did not fully believe. Because the glory for what you are declaring is not yours so the responsibility to hold it up cannot be yours as well it's not to your name the glory is not coming to your name the power is not going to come from you are you still there so you can't lower lower your hand because your faith is because your heart is struggling with it when you lay your hands on the sick and they don't seem to recover, I hope you remember before you feel bad and stop praying for the sick. I hope you remember that when you prayed it was in Jesus' name. Please allow the person whose name was used to pray to take the shame when healing doesn't happen. Don't pray in Jesus' name and walk away feeling like, what happened? What happened? What happened? Really? What happened? Nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing. Because it was in Jesus' name you pray. You become a person of faith when after you have prayed in Jesus' name, you can rest in Jesus' name. If you pray in Jesus' name and you are worried for Jesus' name or you are worried for yourself, then your faith was not in Jesus. Your faith was not in Jesus. You have just learned. <laughs> You have copied somebody who prayed in Jesus. The drama is not complete until you can act like the person is healed. You and the person you prayed for can both act like you're healed. 
Because with Jesus, whom, in whose name you prayed, there is no sickness. So after you lay your hand and pray for the sick, both of you get up, one person be happy that you're healed, and the other person happy that he's healed, because we did this whole thing in Jesus' name. So after we prayed in Jesus' name, we must hook up to Jesus' realm. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yes. You don't believe for healing and stay in bed all day. The game is not complete. The drama is not complete. You don't believe for restoration and pick up your phone and cry. Every time somebody calls you, you pick the phone. <laughs> That's not how to believe for restoration. Hallelujah. Are you learning something tonight? It's the character of faith character of faith. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive tonight the spirit of faith for the impossible in the name of Jesus. Somebody's finances just changed. Because your character changed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we speak about the spirit of faith, we're speaking about something that's much more than wind. We're speaking about the character, the mood, the attitude, the character, the, the quality of that thing. And that's where we're going with this second part. Amen. Now, let me take you a little bit into um, a mystic reality. Then I'll bring you out with practicals. Amen. Can we go on? Can we do it? Now something fascinates me in scripture. This is about the spirit of faith. That God made the heavens and the earth, but God never said, let us make the heavens and the earth. Which means that the heavens and the earth were an afterthought of God. The only thing in the beginning that God made and he said, let us make was man. So if you read that the heavens and the earth, in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form void, and then you read the creation story and you arrive at the sixth day, please be careful to realize that what you're studying is the afterthought on the way to the thought. Because you see, the way we process we have thoughts and afterthoughts. Is that true? Now the way the first chapter of Genesis is written is we see God's afterthoughts. Because every word he spoke is rooted in the thought that produced it. People of faith learn this. Every word you speak is rooted in the thought that produced it. Every word. Every word. Every word you speak. Then he said, let us make man... In our own image, after our likeness. So when he made the heavens and the earth, there was no consultation of any kind. That's an afterthought. But when he was going to make man, he said, let us. Which means, there was consultation, there was partnership, there was community, there was, there was kindred spirits. Three personalities agreed. And then God made man. And decisions that are made from a council are more powerful than decisions that were made without any record of thinking. Is that true? I want to be sure I'm in the right church. You said I should go on now. Are we? And so come with me. Don't, don't drop off the van. And so what that means is The reason God made heaven and the earth and everything is because of man. Because man was God's premeditated, was a product of God's premeditated thoughts. But the heavens and the earth were the way God accomplished his thoughts. So the heavens and the earth were to give context, were to give a habitat to what he really wanted to do. 
when he made the heavens and the earth, he had not yet arrived at what he thought to do or what the Sanhedrin agreed to do. They were just creating the basket, the environment, where what they thought and what they are thinking will eventually land. Are you still there? Which means that there is more spiritual allocation for the making of one human body than everything required to build the universe. That the human, the human body, is the human system is more costly. If the universe were a building project, it's more costly than what it took God to make everything around it. Because everything around it was made for man. That's what the Bible, the Sabbath was made for man. And the Sabbath is the day of rest after a lot of work. So everything that was worked was worked for man. Are you still there? Now, this man we're talking about was first created when God said to the word and the spirit, let us, what was happening was creation. Because if it is thought in the spirit, it is already created. So when God said, let us make man, creation was going out in the Sanhedrin between the three of them. They had all released resources, they had agreed, and man was created. And man was created in that suspension in the thoughts of God. Then God made the heavens and the earth to accommodate his thoughts that he has created that's coming soon. Then the Bible declares that he went into the garden and he went into the dust of the earth and then he formed man. So God created man in chapter 1 of Genesis. Then God formed man in, in chapter 2 of Genesis. So man is, is the product of both God's formation, God's creation, and God's inspiration. Because we saw that when he was forming man... He took the man he created and brought him into the man he made. That's the meaning of, and the Lord breathed into man the breath of life. And then man became a living soul. Because he was already in God. Are you still there? And he was, his frame was made. And then his essence was released into his frame. So what was created... And what was made were married by inspiration. It is by the man that was inspirited that the one that was created entered what was made. He said we should do it. Huh? So what you call the spirit of God that he breathed into man was the very life of God, the spirit of God, the character of God, the one they intended. They put him inside the dust. Then he became a living soul. So man is three things. There's a portion of you that's a product of divine inspiration. There's a product of you that's a product of creation. There's a product of you that's a, that's a part of you that's a product of the dust of the earth. The part of you that's the dust of the earth is what you call your body, your case, your earth suit. The part of you that's a product of creation, when three people talk together, is what you call your soul, your mind. It was built by thinking. That's why it is your thinking faculty. Are you still there? There's a third part of you that's a product of being inspirited, inspiration. It's called spirit because God... <sighs> So where did your spirit come from? The breath of God. Where did your soul come from? The creation of God. <laughs> where did your body come from? It's very important to understand this. Now, mm, so the part of you that spirit is, of course, spirit matter. It's real, but it's spirit. It's energy. Why is it energy? Because it can be felt, but 
it can be seen with naked eyes. The part of you, that soul, is invisible. The part of you, that's body, is visible. Let's start again. Man is spirit, which means from God. Huh? Man is soul, which means created by God. And man is body, concrete body, which means made with a logo on it. The Bible says we are his workmanship. We were created in Christ Jesus unto where his brand. So there is a part of you that's spirit because it came from God. True or yes? There's a part of you that's from God, but it, it can't be described as spirit because it didn't come by inspiration. It came by creation. You can only call it energy because it can think. How many of you have ever seen your mind? How many of you have Embrace your mind. Felt your mind. But how many of you use your mind? Let me see your hand now. I know I'm not pastoring mad people. I said how many people use your mind? Fantastic. So your, your mind functions like energy. It's not altogether spirit. But it's also not concrete. It is like invisible matter. It's energy. It's matter too, it's, it's material, but not in a way that you can feel it and touch it. Oh, I feel alone. Like I shouldn't have gone this way. Now, <laughs> in the same way, God made the world on three levels of light. First, we know that God is light. Is that true? But we also know that God said, let light be. Is that true? But we also know that God said that the sun, moon, and stars should appear in the firmament. Is that true? What are the sun, moon, and stars? They are balls, celestial balls of, of light. The sun, moon, and stars will allow your body to experience illumination. The let there be of God will give light to your soul. That's the light with which your soul sees. But God as light is a source of illumination for your spirit. This is an important revelation because... I told you that the spirit of faith is concerned with the back end of things. Things that are real but unseen. Because there are certain things that are unseen and the fact that they are unseen does not mean they are unreal. In fact, if Hebrews 1, 11 verse 2 is correct, then real life, reality is in the spirit realm because the things that were seen were not made from things that do appear. So the reason for them, the, the material that made them, how do you take something that is unseen and you use it and use it and use it and the product is seen? Because it says the things that we see were not made from things that do appear. So many things that do not appear were combined and the product of the things that do not appear is something that is seen. It's like the chemistry of faith. Are you still there? Now, so you must understand that there are three levels of light. And these three levels, the God that is light, the light that he said should be, and then the light of nature by which everything in the natural grows and your body responds to, is the same three levels of light you see in the tabernacle. In the outer court, the sun gives light in the outer court. In the inner court, the menorah, the seventh candle stand, gives light not the sun it's blocked away from the sun but in the most holy place there is no menorah there is no candle light there is no sunlight there is only the shekinah the glory light because god is light then god said light should be and then god created bodies of light are you still there so what happens 
when we talk about the spirit the very character of faith we're saying can you dare to live life in the natural and be using the light that is god to lead this one <laughs> i should come again the spirit of faith is is an inquiry to believers it's asking us a question that there is, a, there is a light by which our eyes see. There is a light by which our soul sees. That's the light that turns on and you, you experience something like creativity. Or sudden answers. Or you just have a solution. That's the second dimension of light. It's not the sun that's responsible for that one. It's the one God said, let there be light. That's the one you're running by. But I said there's a higher one. There is the... There is God that is the father of light. There is the God that is light himself. And the spirit of faith is calling us beyond the things that sun, moon, and star can allow us to see. And taking us on a trip beyond what the illumination of the mind can perceive. Are you still there? Because we live by faith, not by sensory perception. It's asking us to prosecute human life by the light that is God. It's madness. Because God was on the scene and there was no light in the natural. God had to say, let there be light. And there was still no light in the natural. So he had to put sun, moon, and stars, bodies of light to give light to nature. So all those other two lights were not for people with eyes only. There were people who have learned to hook up to another, a higher life. Where there is another light. And the, the other word for light is instruction. Another level of instruction that's far from this one. So when a person of faith opens their eyes, the first goal, the first behavior, the first character of faith is that it does not perceive things like people with optics does. Any time you make a conclusion that is equal to what everybody observing sees about that situation, you are not operating by the spirit of faith. If you take a doctor's report that's bad and you sample it by five people who went to school and have sense and have learned according to the laws of this life and see things according to the laws of, of life, the physical life, and they have bad things to say about that medical report and you are the sixth person and there's five of them and you too feel that it is true the things that were said and written by the doctor, you accept it, then you ought not to speak yet because you have not hooked up to the level of light where finalities come from. That's not the time to speak. That's the time to wait because you are judging by the eyes. That's what the Bible says about Jesus when he comes. He will not judge by the, by the seeing of his eyes because Oh, faith is another kind of eye. Oh my God. The spirit of faith is the one that can hear it if God says, let us make man. The spirit of faith can peep into it. When God is discussing with God, because in that level you only have access if you have something that's inside you that's from God. The spirit of faith inside us is calling us to live this life. See, and this is the time for us to practice in our, in our finances. If it is true that we're from Zion, if it is true that our king is a lion, if it is true that there is no lack or slack in the commanding heights where we come from, our big responsibility in this season, when it looks like money is failing in the land and the economies are coming crashing down, is that you and me must find light. We must find ideation. We must find inspiration from another level that's higher than the things that match the news. 
until we have done that, we're not living the life of faith. Oh dear, Lord help me. I feel so alone. If a thought hasn't crossed your mind, let's come home. If a thought in the middle of recession, if a thought has not crossed your mind, that can give, put you at the advantage in the middle of recession, you have not come to this level of the spirit of faith. If you haven't picked up something, a glimmer of something of light from God, that you know that if you ponder on and exercise and find a little bit more, it will not matter what's happening today. You're not operating by faith. And it doesn't matter how many scriptures you quote. If something hasn't come to you, <laughs> that's out of this world. You may not even know how it's going to happen. But if you're not receiving <sighs> ventilation, you're not, you're not sensing a connection to another level that's beyond the things that human beings can discuss. Within. If you've not started having God conversations in your head, when you're just thinking and God is talking to God inside your head, you don't have the audacity of faith yet. You're supposed to expose yourself to the Spirit of God and the Word of God until when you hear what people have said, you will hear another one. Are you there? It is that other one that you have heard. The practice that allows you hear again from God about what men have said. That's the spirit of faith. When you open your mouth like that, what this world will be experiencing is light from heaven. Light, 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 light. You may not see anything, but the moment you open your mouth, light from another realm, higher than this realm, power beyond this realm starts to enter your circumstances. So I'm giving you assignment. You are poor. You may be born again, but you are already poor. And it doesn't matter what's in your account. If you are not having experiences that are beyond our economy, in your head, in your spirit, if you are not experiencing a kind of support system, it's just, it's happening within. You don't know when it will explode. You don't know when God will give it expression. You are not sure. But there's something tickling. There's a bubble inside of you. You are sensing something. You, you haven't seen the main dish, but you can smell something happening in your spirit. You are feeling the sensation of a possibility that you, you can't tell to people because it's a God, it's a God possibility, it's a God conversation. You can't explain. It's not explainable, but you are aware that something else is going on. You are feeling a hope, a high hope. You're just... Oh dear, dear, how many of you have ever felt this thing I'm talking about before? It, it doesn't make sense. But it's there, it's there, it's there. It, it's there, it's there, it's there. You can feel it. You can feel it. It's almost like you're living a double life. It's like you're a double standard person. <laughs> you, you just can't tell. But something is alive in you that just tells you, I'm not sure, but I know. I just, how do you know? I know. <laughs> it's, it's like the gift of faith. Uh, or let's use the word of knowledge. You can hear all kinds of spe spectacular things about the gift of the word of knowledge. But... And I did hear, when I began to walk in the gift of the word of knowledge, I just discovered that, ah, wait, oh, I know what I know, but I don't know how I know it, but I know. That's another light. It doesn't have formulas with men. And if I declared it, there would be proof. But how I arrived at it, uh, 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 uh. I will be whew, I will be attempting to box the power of God to give it a formula there's that kind of knowing 
when you start sensing that kind of knowing, just know that what's happening inside you is the spirit of faith is rising like an edifice. Nurture it, nurture it. It will come like a glimmer of light. It won't come with many details. It will not be a whole word from the Lord. Uh -uh. Many times not. But something will start fanning inside you. You just remember that area of your life where they said you are disadvantaged and truly according to the clock, you are disadvantaged. And the moment you start to ponder on it and you give it to the Lord, one small candle is lit inside your spirit. The moment you notice that candle lights inside your spirit, Cover it with your hand. Nurture it. Fan it. Hey. Don't go and make friends with fire extinguishers. No, 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 no. Guard it. Cover it. The moment you find it, it's, it comes from the spirit. But when it comes, you must be the kind of person that can tell that I've gotten something I can't explain. I've gotten something I couldn't pay for. I've gotten something there's no explanation for. I've gotten something inside of me that beats all the logic up. It beats everything. But I feel it. I know it. Because you see, the spirit of man is the candlelight of the Lord. It searches, the Bible says, the inner part of the belly. The inner part of your belly. There's a searching. You just find it. You can't tell it. You must be the person that knows how to guard it. It's the spirit of it. It's rising. It's rising. Many people lose it. Because they bring it out and commit it to logic. They give it to somebody. Who doesn't have it? And they ask you, please explain what I'm feeling. It's weird. But I can feel it. They say, hmm, that thing I'm feeling is sense. It's leaving you. Sense is leaving you gradually. Then you say, you see, I know it. I'm already losing my mind because I'm waiting. I'm losing my mind. Help me, help me. I need therapy. That's the end. That's the end. This thing I'm telling you, I cannot explain it. That's the problem. But I know it. Many of you have felt it before. You know it. You just didn't know what to do with it when you felt it. Because it always sounded foolish. Oh, receive an impartation of the spirit of faith. Let that fire light in your spirit right now. All over this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let that fire, let the ones that died come alive again. Wherever you're watching, let that light come up again. Let it come up by the mercies of God. Oh, Balelokosa. That the Lord will light your candle. He will embrighten your darkness. That light that is not of the sun. That light that is not of the mind and consciousness. That light that is of God. Let it come alive inside you. Let it awaken again. Let that candle be lighted. Let that light shine. Let the dross be taken away. Let the dross be taken away. Let the altar be rebuilt. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1. God who in sundry times and diverse manners in the past had spoken to our fathers by the prophet, had in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed to be heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Oh, I love this scripture. Oh, he says, who be the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sin and then he had sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high the bible says he was made so much better than the angels so much better than the angels and he had obtained by inheritance a better name than they oh my god oh dear Okay, let me, let me, see, because when we talk about the spirit of faith, let me not catch the wave and be going with it so we can close. Mm. When we talk about the spirit of faith, I, I am required as your disciple to teach you how to train your human spirit to catch that flame and fan it. Would you like to know that on our way home? Teach you how to culture it. When it comes in the darkness of your experience, it, it lights 
the lights. As your spirit intercourses with God's spirit, there's a spark. But many people have water in their soul. And it does not allow the spark to survive. I want to teach you how to catch it. How to spread it. And how to live by it. Number one. This is very important. May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. You have to train yourself. Train your human spirit. See, your spirit can be trained. Your muscles can be trained. Your mind, your intellect can be trained. And the same way, your spirit, your energy level, your ability to leap into new levels, new energy levels, and drag your soul and body along into the experience of your faith, you can train your spirit to do that for you. And the way to do it, as the Lord taught me, it's not in any books, it's, it's from my experience of faith, is number one, you have to train your human spirit to know the purpose of all things God brings your way. Train yourself to know the purpose of all things God brings to you. I taught you here that when the lion and the bear came to David, it was a divine token. It was a prophecy. That battle, that warfare was a prophecy that I had be between him, his, his present experience, and the fulfillment of the oil of Samuel on his head, which takes him to the throne. The lion and the bear came to tell him that there will be a king and a giant to kill. To take his throne. Saul had anointed him king. But there was a ruling king. And kings don't go till they die. It's not like a president. It's not four years. So a king will die. That's the meaning of the oil on his life. But on the way to the king dying. A giant will first die. The bear was the, was the type of Goliath. I taught you here. Do you remember? Yeah. And the lion was a type of Saul. So he had warfare in his life. But the meaning of that battle was that this would be the two hurdles. And he's trading and killing them in that simulator. Was the promise that he will have it in real life. So if you manage to train yourself to know the purpose of everything God brings to you, the people God brings to you, the jobs God takes you to, the places God asks you to leave, the local church he sends you to, the assignments he gives you in the lives of men, if you can train your human spirit to look beyond how people look to know why they came into your life. Why? Why? Always ask why. Why? They taught us not to ask God why. It's a lie. It's a lie from hell. It's a lie from it's out of context. Always ask. And don't ask them. Ask God. The moment you have a new experience, check into inquiry mode. Don't take on a new experience and go on with the flow in the new experience without an inquiry in your spirit. Why? 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 Train your spirit to ask why. The purpose for everything. Every other area of your life is going forward. One area is left behind. Why? Why? Don't always ask to, to be delivered from it. Ask why it came. It might be a prophetic token of something else in your future. That you're required to learn here and now. And the victory that will overcome the world will be your faith. Your ability to exercise conviction in the middle of adverse circumstances. Are you still there? It's your opportunity to exercise faith. God left it backwards. David is left backwards. He's the last child. He's ostracized. He's left to die. But the reason why was not Jesse or his mother. The reason was Goliath 
Yet at song. Why? And please make sure you get your explanations from God because the natural explanation for David be keeping sheep in the backside of nowhere is because somebody hated him. The reason why he was in the back, the natural, the, 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 the meaning with natural light. You see, I told you there are three lights. There are three levels of light. There's the one that's God's light. It's God's, you, you have to be like God to see that light. It's not, it's not for this world. There's the intellectual light. Some people have ascended. Some, some monks know how to kneel and wait in one position for 20 hours in order to absorb that other light. <laughs> Is there? Is in the second heaven? Is available, but the third realm is for is only for the recreated human spirits. They're the only ones that can practice themselves into that realm. Are you still there? Yes. That's the meaning of heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's not heavenly places in the firmaments. Are you still there? It's in Christ. Only those who have Christ, Christ access codes, can talk like that and see like that. And act like that and experience the habitat. Train your spirit to, to know the reason for all things. Why did my wife come into my life at the time she did? Why? And it's the answer to that question from what I feel about her. Or the answer is from the one who gave her to me. Because there are certain wars I won't win with her. Except... Beyond the way I feel about her or don't feel about her, I have gotten a why from the one who assigned her. Train your human spirit. Number two. I thought I'll finish the spirit of faith tonight. Number two. And how do you do this? Simple, simple. People of faith, you can only develop the spirit of faith to train your human spirit to know the purpose of, of all things through study. True study. One of the ways God helped my faith to rise is he taught me, son, one day I was walking, I was talking with somebody, and the Holy Spirit said, you are dumb. I said, what's that? He said, you don't ask enough questions. And you've called it courtesy. But it has kept you from the purpose of things and people in your life. I said, really? All right. The only reason why anybody is poor is because of the unasked question. The only reason why anybody is weak is because of the unasked question. The only reason why anybody is sick is because of the unasked question. The unasked question is the paradise of fools. It's the boundary walls in the paradise of fools. The only way to do it is through study, 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 study books, study people, study places, study things. Some of us are too lazy to be people of faith. Study. You get a strange miracle from God. Study it. Study it. Don't hope it will come again. Take a hold of it. <laughs> You get strange favor. You've testified about it. Praise God. Study the science. There's a science to favor. That's what the spirit of faith calls you to. Study. Some of you have prayed for finances from the beginning of this year. You've not read three finance books this year. The only thing you know is memory verses about the promises of God. You don't have the spirit of faith. What you have is religion. That lays foundations but never builds. What you get from scripture is foundation. Number two, train your human spirit to create. <laughs> to create. Which means to design pathways that lead to your desired outcomes. Don't forget when I taught you about what faith is, I told you how to make clear goals. I, do you remember? Do you remember, guys? I taught you about clear goals. I, taught, I, I gave you some points. And I told you that as you, as you continue to uh, master this thing we call faith, there's a couple of things you need to do. And one of it is set, set clear goals. 
and play the game of time. Don't do anything to get there. Just work on yourself. Being is more important than having. Business people have to know that. Train yourself to, come, to, to create. Your human spirit to create. To create plans that lead to the highways, the very things that you expect to experience. If you're expecting a child from God, and you, you have not bought diapers in your house, you don't have the spirit of faith. You've not bought baby mat. You sometimes don't take your YouTube and play children music and just be happy with it. You haven't, you believe God for a baby. But you haven't checked which hospital you like to, you would like to use. You haven't asked some of your doctor friends to take you into maternity wards. You just want to check what it's going to be like to go in here with some green cloth and come out here with the sound of baby and mother. The spirit of faith. And you see, they taught us that if you were believing God for something, you're believing God for a car. Some of you are believing God for a car. You don't have a bunch in your life. You don't have a bunch of keys. The purpose of a bunch of keys is not so that magically the key can become car or diapers can become babies. Diapers don't become babies. Bunch of keys don't become cars. What happens is, the mo as long as you keep the substance of what you desire in front of you, your human spirit is trained to receive it from God, to pull it. There's a comp See, the only thing inside your body that can compel the spirit realm to release its bounty is your spirit. Are you aware? Your tears can't get heaven to respond. Are you aware? It can't. The only part of you that can speak into the spirit realm and hold it and insist that this thing is coming down. I have believed it with my heart. I will receive it with my hand. Is your spirit. So when you keep those things before your eyes, the diapers, you see them every day, the, the baby mat, the bunch of keys, everything that represents your desired outcome, what's happening is you're training your, your human spirit to come out of your experience and launch for the heavens and take a hold on that thing that is yours. That's what's happening. It's not magic, it's training. You're preparing for, you're, you're praying for a wedding. What should we do? We should collect pictures of your wedding colors. Huh? The kind of cake you want. Decoration. Store it in a folder on your computer. Follow Instagram handles and go there. Don't go there to cry. That's, that's, that's silly. Every time you catch yourself feeling funny about somebody else who got what you are trusting God for, Snatch yourself out of it. Snatch yourself. <laughs> because you're supposed to train your human spirit. And to train that human spirit, sometimes you have to break the backbone of, of greed and anxiety and pain. And comparison. You won't let your spirit grow. Are you still there? Yes. What you are doing is you are creating. You're creating because your human spirit carries your creative faculties. That's what God creates by. That's what he gave you. You two are supposed to use it to create. When he said, let us make man, the Vulgate says, let's make another speaking spirit that can speak our kinds of words and get our kinds of outcome. That's the meaning of let us make man. And let him be in our own image. Let him be after our likeness. Then they step out of that conversation and start acting in their image. What is their image? What is their likeness? To use voices to shape worlds. That's what they left that meeting to do. So if, if man is supposed to be made after them, to behave like them, then we are supposed to enter into nothing and create everything. Because that's what he did after thinking and talking. He got out there and spoke things that were not as though they are. You are not in his likeness because you are a human being. You are, you are in his likeness because you can talk like him. 
You, you don't look like God, oh. Yeah? Because if you look like God, then I don't. You don't look like God because you're a human being. That's not what it takes to be like God. His image and his likeness is not any particular figure and any particular size of hips and size of chest. And there's no particular... His image, his likeness, his character. How he talks in the dark. Not the songs he sings in, 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 in the congregation. But how he talks when it's dark. When it's dark. When it's dark, when it's confusing. That voice that still has hope in the dark. In the dark, in the dark, in the dark. Some of you do very well in the light, but you do poorly in the dark. The moment it's dark and you're alone and, all the, and everything is against you, you don't do well anymore. You cry in private and then you sing in public. You're failing. You're falling short of the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith can talk big in the dark. <laughs> the Bible says he that sits in the heavens. They are dragging me on social media, on Instagram. I made one post about a man of faith. Uh, passed on to glory. Reverend Kenneth Hagin Sr. And he was prophesying and began to laugh. How many of you have seen it on my Instagram? And I kind of got into trouble. It started to trend. Started to go viral. It's the most viral thing on my social media right now. You can check it, guys. Hundreds of thousands of people have seen it. I have thousands of comments under it. From all over the world. I must have gotten 2,500 follows now from that singular post. My, my weekly reach is 95K, 100K, 150K accounts for It's that post. And there's just one devil from hell. I saw it break out on my, on my comments. Where people, somebody called me a pagan for it. And then we started, started talking. Some of you enjoyed Mount Self. And all the man was said was in the time of adversity, in the time of seemingly impossible situations. He said, laugh. <laughs> laugh! What you doing in the dark? What you doing in the dark? When you're alone with your, with your thoughts and somebody has bagged that thing you want badly, what, what are you doing? Check your own thoughts. Train your heart, train your spirit to create. In the dark, you create. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the... the... When God stepped up, what did he do? Train your spirit to create in the dark. Number three, final one. Are you getting blessed tonight? When you come for discipleship like this, don't be in a hurry. Your life is too precious. You are the same one. If you go to the airport and they tell you that your flight has been delayed by four hours, you sit down there. You don't get up and call your driver and say, we're going back to town. Because, um, because flight has been shifted. You don't get angry. You are the one. You are the one that gets a visa appointment. And the night before, it, you, you don't sleep. You wake up, you wake up eight times. Before dawn, thinking that it's already time. You are the same one, oh. Then you come to God. God! The one who's, who only can change your life. And then, you're on your way. You have more honor for Arik A. E, and the God of your salvation. And you hiss, you get angry, you fight. But you see fly again. And you delay your flight and you sit down there. If I catch you. <laughs> Number three. Train yourself to find and respond to patterns. 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 People of faith are people of divine patterns. Train your human spirit to pick up patterns. And respond to patterns. You're going to have to learn to respond. Not just to words. Not just respond in prayer. But respond to patterns 
And you can do this. Oh, the, the first one, you do it through study. The second one, you do it through thinking. It's thinking. That's how you create. Create in the dark. Create in the dark. Some of you are not going anywhere financially because you have not created financial fortune in your mind. You have never imagined it. You wish for it. You've seen yourself driving big cars. But that's, that's wishful thinking. <laughs> you haven't created it. A pathway that leads to that highway. You don't have it in your spirit. You're only wishful. You're not creating it. You do it through thinking. Thinking the thoughts of God. Number three, train your human spirit to find and respond to patterns. How do you do this? You, you chronicle and you archive your walk with God. Small, small miracles God did in your life. Keep them. Keep them. That's the character of faith. Keep them. Keep them in archives. I know you want the big one. The big one is coming. But on the way to the big one, that day you sold one product and the person paid for four and said, keep the change. Keep it. Keep it. It can bring you a life of financial fortune. Archive it. Your walk with God, your history, the places in your experience where there was an explosion of breakthrough and grace and the miraculous. Keep it. That's what will help your faith be strong. When for the first time you show up in a camp and you see a creature that opens his hand and there are six fingers on both hands. If fear will not tear you apart, then you must be the person who can re rehearse with these hands. Yes, I'm seeing six fingers on one hand and it's scary. But with these five-fingered hands, I tore a lion. With these five-fingered hands, I tore a bear. I cannot be afraid because of a man that has six fingers. Are you still there? Yes. Yes. You must be a person who, who, who can rehearse miracles of the past. Tra What's happening is you're training. You know, see, this thing I'm teaching you guys, but oh dear. If you will if you will lay a hold on it. If you will lay a hold on it. Some of things I your pastor is praying for, I will not pray for them because you will bring the fruits be praying train yourself rehearse them those of you who can write songs write some of them into songs that's what david did and he never lost a battle because when he arrives at the battlefront on his horse and he holds the leash of the horse and he sees the contending the advancing enemies and they are dangerous they are too much he remembers a song he has written about the faithfulness of god and in order to calm his soul and bring his compass to back to true north so that he can have the vista, the, he can have the strategy enough to contain the battle, win it in his heart, then win it on ground. He, he will sing. He will, he will ask his assistants to give him his harp on his horse. And he will say, let's camp here for five minutes. And then he will play until something, a recalibrator enters his spirit. None of you don't know how to do it. You just look at situations, they are bad, and then you run away and you go to cry. You have not learned to encourage yourself. That's stepwise encouraging yourself to the Lord. You've never practiced it. That's why big things will not happen in your life. Because for big glory to come, big battles must come. It is the bigger the battle, the bigger the glory. And God is scared that you will chicken out and, and you will disgrace his name in the day that big battle comes and big glory is behind it. So he keeps you in the, uh, what we call, mercy drops. Have you heard of mercy drops? Yes. Just enough to, to, to live. Just enough to come by. Just enough to have food in your tummy and a roof over your head. It's called messy drops. Messy drops. You just be getting drops. Because you're not, you're not the person who, who knows how to do rehearsing sessions. Just, just sit down around the bad situation and you say, I killed the lion. I killed the bear. I will destroy this, uns this uncircumcised feeling. I killed the lion. I killed the bear. I will destroy this uncircumcised feeling. I killed the lion. I killed the bear. I will destroy this uncircumcised You don't have it. That's the spirit of faith. Train your human spirit. Are you still there? People of faith, are you still there? Train it. Train it. Train it. Some of you have been in the kitchen before. Hot oil poured on you and there was no scar. You went to the office recently and they looked at you and said, you, I'll deal with you in this office. 
And the moment they said it, you went into depression for two weeks. God forbid. Where is the spirit of faith? You, to whom God suspended the elements, so that hot oil could not burn your, could not leave a scar on your skin. Then you feared the words of, of, of a man. That's the spirit of faith. We do it through archiving your history with God. There was a time, there was time to build my faith. I used to practice this gratitude jar. And I taught it here in the House of Kings. Where you have sticky notes. And every week you wrote something God did that was out of the ordinary for you. And you put it in the jar and you covered it. And after one year... When you are doing Thanksgiving and in December, you open the jar and you read out everything. See, I, I want to swear, if you don't see 10 times more miracles in the new year than you saw in the last year, God is not in heaven. Finally, train your human spirit to pursue hard. After the things that you believe. You don't believe for something and be passive about it. Train your human spirit to yeah. arrive at the place in your life when you become afraid of yourself. That if you commit yourself to something, you must see the end of it. It's the spirit of faith. Don't be the person who's casual with everything. And you can train yourself to be that person. The day you choose to love somebody, you are you, you, you love hard. It's the spirit of faith. That's the route of discipline. If you take that route, it's lonely at first, but if you take that route, you will break through an impossible, an invisible threshold. You will hear the sound of a sonic boom. You will hear that vibration one day. And once you cross that threshold, your life just keeps going upward and forward. Discipline. If you pray hard and don't work hard, you have wasted your prayer. My closing words. Somebody said this and I love it. The way to live your life is like trying to, by the spirit of faith, it's like trying to catch a bus. You don't catch buses here, ever In this country. Okay, but they catch buses in some places. You catch a Okay, you catch aircrafts. You catch planes here. Huh? You catch trains here, too. Fantastic. Okay. It's like trying to catch a train. When you start getting late, you do two things. One, you pray to catch the, the train. Then you run toward the train. Yes. You don't pray to catch the train. Then start singing Kesera Sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not to see. You? You? <laughs> Kesera Sera? No, 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 no. The future? The future is already seen. The life of a lazy man is predicted, is already pro pre prophesied. You pray to catch that train, then you run toward the train. So that if you catch the train, the glory goes to God. If you don't catch that train, then it was not your train. Because you didn't only run to the train, you prayed to catch the train. That's the spirit of faith. This pianist is ministering to me tonight. Glory to God. We've had our issues, but the spirit of faith is on him tonight. Hallelujah. The spirit of God is the spirit of faith. 
Spirit of God is the energizer of faith. The spirit of faith. We have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. He was quoting the psalmist. No time to go that way tonight. When we believe, we attract the spirit of faith. But when we speak, we release the spirit of faith. Say with me. Say, when I believe, I attract the spirit of faith. When I speak, I release the spirit of faith. How many of you believe God for fi financial fortunes in this period? Let me give you an imagination. You see, I told you, to be a person of faith, you must be, you must be creative. You must be somebody who can create fortunes. I have, I have created the kind of future where in another 10 years, I will sit my children down and I'll tell them, do you want to know the time in your life in your father's life, when all the fortune you are enjoying now was created, they say, yes, daddy. They say, I'll tell them it was when fuel became 670. That's a vision for 20 years. 10 years. I've created it now. That the things your father couldn't do when fuel was 200. It was when it became 617. Huh? And it's still going up. Oh. I hope you know. Uh, I've created it. It's, it's, in, it's in the archives. So I have the legitimacy to now say, because I have believed, I can say to any mountain, because I have seed. How many of you believe God for financial fortune in the middle of the recession? With that hand lifted up, Say, declare it. The kingdom needs it, but you have to say, Many children that will never go to school except you rise, they need it. Many bags that will never be clothed except you rise, need it. Many people who will not be discipled according to the ways of God, except you rise, need it. Many people who will sleep hungry for the rest of life, except you rise, they need it. And if you believe, lift your hands and declare it. Find the words of faith by the spirit of faith and declare it. If there's any other area in your life, Create it in your mind and declare it now. Declare it. Come on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As we have declared, so let it be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say believing amen. amen. Are we blessed tonight? Yes. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's give to the Lord tonight. Father, we give in faith. We give to honor you. We've come again. And we're giving in the middle of happenstance and circumstances because we know you're the covenant-keeping God. You can cause your children to sow in the land and reap a hundredfold in famine. And we have come to give with revelation of covenant because it is you that gives us power to make wealth that you may establish the covenant that you made with our fathers. So we line up behind covenant. We're giving ministry and we give again tonight. We give to the furtherance of your kingdom. We give us worship to you. We give as a demonstration of our faith and we give and we receive tonight the spirit of faith like never before to conquer many grounds, to take many cities and to become all that's written in the volumes 
about us. Money will serve us. Amen. We will not serve money. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please go ahead and give to the Lord tonight. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord, for access to treasures in darkness, hidden riches in sacred places. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Faith is rising on our inside like an edifice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 How many of you are leaving this place to go and do exploits by faith? Shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. See, many exploits, many great exploits will be done by this church. In the days to come. We will take many cities. In the days to come. And the cities you will take will be in the number of cities we have taken. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you guys not to forget that we're still giving to the Royal Garden City. That project is still very alive. You haven't seen anything on ground, but in the realm of faith, it's alive. And we're doing so much about it. We want to increase the comfort of our worshipers. We want to um, just reach out in faith. And so please give. If you believe in God for real estate miracles, give to the Royal Garden City. You want a house, you want a car, you want comfort, you want, you're believing God. I want you to sow and cast your bread upon the waters and say to all the mountains, be removed from hence and cast into the sea and there will be miracles. Please apply the things I'm teaching you, please. Please. I'm teaching you things so you can live by them. Live by them. Please, live by them. And one of the proofs that you're living by them is that you're listening to the messages again and again. There will be audio. Play it to sleep for the next three nights. Just play it. Play it into your subconsciousness. Because this conversation is spiritual. Just leave it on. Download it. Switch off your data and leave it on. Let it play through the night. Hallelujah. It's very powerful. Um, God told me that many millionaires will rise at this IGOK. And some of you who have made millions, you will make it again. And again. And again. And so I want you to set your heart to that conference. And give toward it. By the time that conference is here, whether you hear of it or not, our Millionaires Club will be running. Will be running. The real question is whether you will be in the number. But if you can create it by faith, God will do it. In the name of Jesus. And before you blink, the billionaire's club will rise. And in that day, I won't be talking to you like this on the altar about program. I'll preach the word of God and take my seat. Because faith will have produced results in your life. In the name of Jesus. So we, 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 we believe God. This Sunday is special. It's our Thanksgiving Thanksgiving Sunday. You'll be blessed that you came. So please be a part of it. And of course, walkers, you know, our call time is different. So we see you again the same time, same place, same venue, same God. Amen. 
We were going to have a great time. <laughs> Amen. Any other announcements? We have a wedding on Saturday here at the House of Kings. What's the time for the wedding? 10 a.m. Jesus time. If you came at 11, I would have been done. So please be here at 10 o'clock. And of course at 12, I will be teaching business secrets from the Bible. Here at 12 noon under the, um, the umbrella of the Kingpreneur Africa. So please be here and be a part of that teaching. It will revolutionize your, your business, man. And don't forget your life is your business. Tell somebody, say your life is your business. Take your business seriously. Tell them, say your life is your business. So take your business seriously. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to thank all our partners, all our intercessors for praying. I'm going to start to give testimonies on the intercessors group. Because many of you need to begin to know the kinds of things that God is doing through you. Um, our partners, thank you. You're helping us spread the gospel. I can freely travel everywhere my attention is needed. And the gospel needs to preach without asking money questions. That's a good place to clap. And it's because of our partners. Your pastor doesn't go around asking how much will the honorarium be. The pastor doesn't go around asking how much is transport to where we need to preach. <laughs> and it's because we have partners who have committed to the Lord in this house. In fact, we go, we go to the nations and we bless them. We see they don't have some things in their church. We say, take, the house of kings has blessed you. That's what we go around doing. Amen. And it's because of you. Clap, clap, clap. You don't like good things. You don't like bad things. I don't know what you're up to. We give you announcements. Good things are happening. You are indifferent. We tell you bad things are happening. Yeah. Clap again. Clap again. Yes. Uh -uh. What do you want from this life? Eh? Yeah. Next two weeks again, we're in Joss, the city of Joss, proclaiming the glorious gospel. After that, we're in Otupo, proclaiming the glorious gospel. And we're ministering all around the place. Yes. Uh -uh. Thank you, Lord. Let's bless him. Lord, we bless you. Who's here for the first time? Anybody in the studio? This is your first time at the House of Kings on a Wednesday night to fellowship with us. Please wave your hand. And there'll be somebody shaking you and smiling to you and receiving you with Jesus' joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We love you. We're glad you're here. You'll never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Say with me, Jehovah is Alpha Omega of my year. I will not fear because he beautifies my days with grace and glory. I will not lack. The Lord of hosts is the strength of my life. He never leaves me, nor forsakes me. He delivers me. Come on, I told you the spirit of faith speaks. It speaks, it speaks, it speaks. Say he delivers me out of every evil. Out of me will proceed thanksgiving. Are you speaking intentionally from your spirit? Say out of me will proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. The Lord has multiplied me. I will not diminish. The Lord has glorified me. I will not be small. When men are cast down, I will arise. I will say, 2023 is my season of quantum faith leaps. The Spirit of the Lord God of hosts has performed it now and forevermore. Somebody give a shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Go with the spirit of faith and do mighty things for God. God bless you, our family online. Shalom, shalom. Shalom Aleichem, shalom. Good night.